what we have here, this is the Friar 2100 control. We happen to be in a manual mode. And we have two different ways to set up our part or our tools. First, I would use a part probe to possibly find the zeros on my part. And then I can actually qualify my tools based on a tool probe. So initially what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the part probe and we're going to find some features on this part we have in the vise. To do that, I'm going to tell the machine to load up my probe. You'll notice I have a face mill in the machine now, so I'm going to put that away and I'm going to manually insert the probe. Now, the machines come standard with a wired probe, like you see here. If you'd like, we also do, as an optional price, you can get a wireless probe. Same thing holds true with the tool preset. So now my probe is in my spindle. The machine knows it has it. And now I want to come down and find some zero parts on my piece. Well, position down, put the machine close and center. Now you notice, this machine I happen to be using is our MV series. These are laid out so I can manually run the machine as well as full CNC operation. Now there's a couple different th things I can do when finding a zero. If you look up at the screen, and I know it's going to be a little hard to see, I can select our work point zero option. When you go to work point zero, I have the ability of finding an edge using the probe as an edge finder. I can find the edge with multiple points if my part happens to be skewed at some angle, it'll compensate for it. I can find the inside of hole features, or I can find the outside of boss features or blank stuff. In this case, we're finding the outside of a part, so I'm going to select that. And then what is my part? Is it rectangular, circular? Am I looking at it between bosses? In this case, it's a rectangular part. I select it. Now it's a matter of just filling out these five variables. First thing it asks me is what work coordinate I would like to use. So I'm going to say I'm using work coordinate number two, what the overall rough size of my stock is, how far down I want to allow the probe to go before it hits the edge of it, and then what I want to call the center of the part when I'm done. Do I want it to be zero, zero? Do I want it to be three inches over from an edge? Whatever. Once I filled out the cycle, I merely hit cycle start. You're going to watch the machine's going to actually probe the part. So move over come down and then it's going to find its first edge and then from there it's going to walk around and do the other three surfaces or edges. So at this point, you're going to see the machine's going to now move to its actual center of the part and allows me the ability of activating the coordinate I just set. I merely hit OK. If you look up the screen, the display is now 0, 0. I'm at the dead center of my part. At this point, my 0 is now set up for my piece. Again, if I wanted to edge find with it, I would merely come back, select my edge finding option, and there I could pick one edge point two points to adjust for skew, or I can still find the center of an object just working on one side. So at this point, I would probably want to load up and qualify my tools. So for instance, let's say we're going to measure or set up the length for a face mill. What you do is you go to your measure tool option, select length auto, for automatically adjusting the length, then we tell it what tool we want to adjust. In this case, we're going to use our face mill. I'm going to insert that. Select cycle start. Now since this is a wired probe, the machine's going to prompt me to remove the tool. I take my tool out. Cycle start again. It's going to now 
I grab my face down. From here, it's going to automatically move over to the location of the probe. Start my spindle backwards so it won't damage the probe. Come down, touch it. Now knows the length of that part or that tool. Next step in this scenario, I have to have a center drill set up. Maybe I want to touch off the length of that center drill and the diameter of it. From here, I can now select a new tool from my tool library. I'm going to pick my center. You'll notice all I have to do is select a new tool. It will automatically come up, switch tools for me without me having to go to any form of a G-code or an MDI mode to do that. In this case, you'll notice that it's just going to work right off the center of the tool. Now that's set. If I want to set a diameter, I back up one screen, select Diameter Auto, cycle start. Now I'm going to move off the part, turn my spindle on again backwards, come down and physically hit the edge of that tool. At this point, the tool's all set up. If I come out and go to my tool table, I not only see my length is now set, but I also have a diameter of the tools. From here, I could then proceed into doing whatever I want to do with these cutters, whether I'm manually machining or physically running a full-blown program. That's good.